Hello everybody! Welcome to another video in the Bronze Age series, where we use a Bronze Age base and try and do some of the more challenging things that Valheim has to offer. In this video, we'll be focusing on Bronze Age base defenses. Now, this is really the main thing to worry about here. So, I'll teach you about base defenses live as we have to deal with some of the more problematic options. The first thing to understand is as soon as these events happen, or you've aggroed a nearby troll, you need to size the troll up. Because this guy, he ain't so bad. Honestly, even if he was a two-star troll, he's just got two arms. That's nothing. Oh, the ones with the sticks. Those are the ones you really have to watch out for. Maybe even the most dangerous mob in the game, because they have a reach that is unmatched by anything else, and you will die to them often, thinking you jumped out of the way. Whereas with these dudes, I mean, look at this. I can just dodge their attacks, no problem. It's, it's like fine. See? Whereas the big stick guys, uh, different story. But you see that this raid is happening, right? And all I got is wood. And I didn't even use the strong walls. I mostly just used these things to mess up their pathfinding because they're cheaper. And you can see how the trolls get pretty confused. And so how do you confuse the trolls? It's really useful to cut trees just enough so they fall down. Not only will the trolls literally process the wood for you, but it'll really confuse them because the trees move around and that messes up their pathfinding. You'll also notice that I haven't been fighting them yet. And that's because you really want to wait to fight them, or at least wait to kill them, until the event ends. Because if you kill them while the event is still active, they'll respawn. So wait for the event to end. Unless, that is, you want to farm the resources. In that case, totally different story. So, as you can see, the main thing to keep in mind here is you can just use cheap wood, because you don't want them to actually attack the wood. If you make a successful wall that they know they can't get into, then they'll often just attack it and break it. So the idea is to confuse them so much that they spend all their time wandering around like, Look at this dude! What you doing, man? You could've just, like, my beds are over there. Why, why, don't, why don't you care, huh? And you see how I can just run around like I'm not even rested. It's raining, but it's not that bad because this is a great defensive structure. This brings us up to the next point, which is all about having clearings and open areas. You see, you want to be able to run around. You'll often find that when you die to trolls, it's because you're running away, and then you got get stuck on something, and you try and jump, but you get stuck, and then they attack you and you die. Usually you get stuck on trees like this, or bigger trees. Ooh, shoot, you got me. But you see how easy it is? Like, all I have to do, I just went through here, and then they just were like, oh, I guess we gotta walk all the way around now! And it just, it becomes so easy to stay alive, even if there's a couple trolls. Eventually, they'll actually process all the wood for you, and that makes it much more problematic, so you have to regrow the wood, but it is totally doable. Another pro tip here is to use Tasty Mead. Anytime you need a quick stamina buff, you can just hotkey Tasty Mead, and for 10 seconds, you'll double your stamina regeneration. And yeah, that slow is your health regen, but who cares? You don't even gain that much health in 10 seconds anyway. Wait a second, why are there three trolls here now? How'd that happen? I didn't even notice that, I was so distracted making the video. <laughs> Normally events can only bring two trolls at a time, so that means that one from somewhere else came in. But really, this is nothing, because these three trolls don't have sticks, they left their sticks at home. It's kind of funny, because there's a bunch of sticks laying around, but... And basically, all you need to do to actually kill the trolls is to take your time, use up your stamina, maybe use some tasty mead, and then just sort of run away, take advantage of the tasty mead to re recover, and you can also jump over obstacles like this, and that'll cause their pathfinding to change, right? They'll have to go around this now, and that gives me ample opportunity to shoot them in the face. And then as soon as they get to this side, oh, these poor trolls, I mean, I can just jump over the fence again, and then they got no choice. Oh, I'm out of air. Oh, you lucky trolls. Do I have my... S oh, yeah. Bring it. Bring it, baby. Hiya. Ah, oh, crap. Well, now I gotta go get some more arrows. But this is a perfect opportunity to test some things, right? Because theoretically, you shouldn't really ever go into your base to the vulnerable place when you're actively being chased by trolls. But theoretically, I made this maze so convoluted that they won't actually be able to come here and attack me. And I'll be able to restock and get what I need, which is more arrows. Got all this nonsense. And now let's see what's going on with him. He looks dangerously close, so let's kind of go away a little bit. Uh, see how close he is? If that was a stick troll, the stick trolls are really, like, exponentially more dangerous. But you see, just by jumping around, this is yet another area where just one of these simple wooden fences outsmarts these 
Trolls. They really don't know what to do about fences. It's actually really ideal for the trolls to be in the water like this because they start moving really slowly and then you can just shoot them in the face and kill them. It's also ideal to be able to separate the trolls and uh, when you make a convoluted maze like this that inevitably just happens. And now that you had that more hands-on experience, we can zoom out a little bit and give you a better picture of what's really going on here. So you can see that there's actually quite the fortifications around this base. There's a couple layers, and one of the main things you want to keep in mind is you want a lot of visibility, so you can really see what's going on. It's ideal to be able to delay the enemies, such as the trolls, for 30 seconds before they get to your wall. Another event just triggered, ground is shaking again. So let's see what happens here. All right, as you can see, the trolls are right outside. This is problematic. What's going on here? How long is it going to take them? They're in. Oh, this is the point where you would you would really want to go back outside. Like, really, you, you really don't want trolls to be wailing on your perimeter defenses and throwing rocks at your outpost like this. But theoretically, oh, bless their hearts. Uh, oh, support beam. Theoretically, they won't get to the beds. As you can see, though, I don't have the patience for that. Oh, God. Ah! And I'm going to run away and take them into the safe place. You don't have to be able to stop them forever. Just for long enough that they won't destroy your beds straight away. And that's sort of the sweet spot. Because, yeah, you could build a bunch of trenches and that'd be great. But come on. That's only fun when you first do it. And then you just invalidated the entire progression for the rest of the game. Tasty mead! Oh, you see, you see how I dodged both those trolls? If they had sticks, that wouldn't happen. Like, I, I fight these trolls like this because they don't have sticks. And all I had to do is jump behind these logs here, and then the trolls have to go all the way around. And this gives me time to, you know, pick off Grey Dwarfs and get my stamina in and all that magic. See, now I'm out of stamina, but I can just pop a Tasty Mead. And then just walk around for a little bit with the extra time that I have because of all these barricades. And then boom, I'm back to shooting at them, and now I have full stamina again, and they're set up to be kited. Don't worry, my aim's actually this bad, even if I have my UI on, so. Someday I'll kill these trolls. You know, on one hand, it takes me forever to kill these trolls, but on the other hand, they do chop all the wood down for me, and I don't really like doing that, it's kind of boring. Oh, I spoke too soon. Come on, buddy. It's actually quite ironic if you think about it, because the trolls use the logs to kill you, right? But you can also use the logs to completely screw them up in combat. So you kind of each use it against each other. I think that's kind of poetic. Don't you, Mr. Troll? Oh god, I hope he has like one health left. <laughs> My gut is strong today. Alright, Mr. Grey Dwarf, you've been hassling me for too long. You too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Now that all that excitement's over, let's recap on a couple ways that you can make sure that your base stays alive during the Bronze Age. First off, it's really a good idea to keep your base off the ground. You see where my character is? That's actually a better place for you to be. The floor should be around up there, and even then, you might want it a little bit higher. Those trolls really pack a punch. Additionally, you need to know the kinds of things that attract monsters, especially when a raid happens. Because they're always going to try and get to you first. But they wouldn't be able to get to me right now, because I'm in this weird floating state. So what would they do? Well, let's see what happens. We can see that some Grey Dwarf have come in, but they, they kind of are wandering around aimlessly. And this is because they essentially don't have a target. If they were closer to the base, they'd attack things. So now, let's put me back on the ground. There we go. This should totally change everything, because suddenly, uh, I exist. That means we should start having a flood of Grey Dwarfs. And this is where we'll actually see the base defenses, because the Grey Dwarfs are smaller, and they'll essentially show you the shortest path to what's near your character. Eventually, they do start getting closer, and they will eventually damage everything, so that's why it's really important that your house is high up enough so that they can't really get to it if they damage stuff on the floor. You want to imagine that you could basically suffer losing that whole bottom floor and your base wouldn't crumble because of like some kind of rock or whatever that you used that was part of the environment. As long as you keep that first sort of area clear, it's going to be really hard for most raids to break through. Additionally, it's really helpful to just have lots and lots and lots of fences that mess up pathfinding. As you saw earlier, it takes the Grey Dwarfs a while to run around everything and you could even 
spice this up even more by adding wolves and all sorts of other stuff. But I'm really focused on the limitations of the bronze era for the moment. Additionally, you want as much of your open area to be covered in logs. It should sort of look like this. This is perfect. There's like triangles and logs around. This is how you fight trolls with ease. As you fight trolls in these areas, they'll rapidly convert the defenses into wood, which is actually kind of convenient. All you have to do is replant the trees and then chop them down. It actually doesn't take that long because you only need to chop the tree long enough to have it full. And don't even worry about the stump. They all serve a purpose. Another great defense is visibility. You want to be able to see very far. How are you going to defend yourself from a troll in this? Or even worse, this! Oh god! There are lots of other things that monsters are attracted to that they'll actively come and attack if they can see them. Things like kilns, furnaces, and torches are also included in this category. Unlike items that directly attract them, monsters won't actually attack walls and floors and all these other things unless there's a special circumstance, basically. To illustrate this, we have a gray dwarf and some walls, and then there's a workbench. It looks like he hasn't seen the workbench, but you can tell that he doesn't really care about the walls. He's cool with them. But eventually, look what happened. <laughs> He actually went off. Can you see him? He decided to chill out in that tree. I thought that was pretty cute. Man, this guy's way more peaceful than I thought. I thought he'd destroy the workbench for sure. Out of sight, out of mind, huh? Well, we'll bring in a buddy, and then you'll see what I mean. <laughs> and now they're going to town. But this illustrates the point. Certain items like workbenches, crafting areas, fires, all that sort of stuff will attract enemy attention. Walls, however, won't. And this is why the defenses I showed earlier in this video work. It's all about distracting the enemies and making their pathfinding take long enough that you have plenty of time to figure out what to do, shoot them, etc. Another defensive habit you can have is making it so that you have to jump in order to get into your base. Jumping is something that enemy AI struggles with and it'll almost always buy you more time. You can still use stairs, but make them on these little platforms where you just have to press one regular jump to then get up. And here's one more secret for base defense, other biomes. Honestly, I was shocked at how interesting Valheim is when your base is nearby multiple other biomes. It's just sort of boring when the Grey Dwarfs are always hitting on you all the time. <laughs> and seeing Grey Dwarfs just get massacred by fueling. Oh, it's the best, it really is. <laughs> Speaking of that, here's a sneak peek at one of our next Bronze Age videos. How to manage the planes in Bronze Age gear. This goblin's given me some trouble, but not to worry because as long as you stay focused, you'll be able to take these goblins out real fast. Keep your eyes on the prize and your knife in your hand. Wait for them to attack and then go in for the stagger. It's not long before you get them with your dagger. Consider renting your own Valheim server using my link, JP Valheim. It's a great way to play Valheim with your friends. And if you want YouTube to recommend more Valheim content, then make sure to like this video or any other video about Valheim, and that'll get it done.